So for um, various reasons, I've wanted a conductive paint or ink for quite some time. And I've had a look on the internet and, and they're pretty expensive things. Uh, and then I decided to try and make one. And if you try and make one, the um, big deal is silver nitrate. And that's about £25 for a tiny little bottle of stuff. So it's all looking really expensive. Um, now there's a company called Bear Conductive that do a conductive ink that you can buy for £6 a pen. And you can, you can use that. But the conductivity is quite low. It's something like 430 ohms per centimetre. So, although it will do circuits, obviously you're not going to do complicated circuits with it, uh, and it's fairly thick uh, and kind of hard to use. So, I was looking at making my own ink in a cheap way. Um, now, not wanting to use silver means your next option really is copper. And uh, I came across this little method, which I thought was really quite cool. Now, what you're going to need to do this is um, some copper sulfate, first of all. Now, copper sulfate is sold as a root killer or a dealginator for ponds, so you can just buy it at the garden centre. Um, I actually bought this from a chemical supplier. It was about, um, I think it was about £3 for a kilogram, something like that. It, it wasn't very expensive. The other thing you're going to need is uh, ascorbic acid. And again, I bought this from a chemical supplier, and this was um, five pounds for one kilogram. So I spent eight pounds on the thing. Uh, I came across a um, research paper on this, and what you do is you get yourself um, some hot water. Uh, this I boiled earlier, and it's supposed to be about seven degrees, so I just take it from, from the boiling. And add about five grams of ascorbic acid to it. yourself a saturated solution. And there's my five grams, give it a stir. And there you go, the whole thing just dissolves quite nicely, leaves you quite a saturated solution of it. And that's a, a solution of ascorbic acid. The ascorbic acid, in case you're interested, is vitamin C. The next thing that you need is a saturated solution of your copper sulfate. And in this case, it's about a gram that you add. So I just stick about a gram in there. Give it a stir. And there you go, there's your copper sulfate solution. So you've got two solutions, vitamin C solution and copper sulfate. And what you do is Stir the vitamin C. I'll just change that so you can see that. There you go. So you stir your vitamin C. Remember, this is about seven degrees, 70 degrees. And as you're stirring it, you add in your copper sulfate. And you'll see it go that kind of brownish colour almost immediately. And just keep on adding it till it's all gone and stirring it away. Don't need to do this for very long. Now what's happened in there is that the ascorbic acid has reduced the copper sulfate to um, pure copper powder. It's a, a nanoscale copper powder, so it's extremely tiny. Uh, and this is a way of producing metamaterials. So there's a, a, a nanoparticulate copper suspension in there. And as you move that, it'll begin to sediment out. And it takes a little while to sediment out. Yep, starting to go. And what you'll get is a thin film of a salmon pink colour. Now that salmon pink colour are the copper nanoparticles that are forming there. And I will leave that to one side for a minute. And in good pea, blue pea to fashion, here's one I prepared earlier. So you can see there, there are the salmon pink precipitated copper nanoparticles right there. Now in order to turn that into an ink, what you need to do is dry it off a little bit and um, once, once it's precipitated out incidentally, uh, the supernatant, the liquid lying on the top, you just pour off. And because the copper is so much heavier, it's actually relatively easy to pour off. And then you're left with this powder residue, this copper powder residue. In order to turn that into a paint, what you need is to add some kind of binder to it. 
And the binder I used was just ordinary Winners and Newton gum Arabic. You can get this at um, an art store, any art store really, it's about three quid for a bottle. It doesn't make much of this stuff, but luckily enough you don't actually need that much. So just to recap, you, know, you need some vitamin C, some copper sulphate, some hot water at 70 degrees. You make up two solutions concentrated, one of um, your vitamin C, the other of your copper sulphate. Add the copper sulphate solution to the vitamin C, it'll go brown. Leave it for a while, then all the copper nanoparticles will sediment out to the bottom of your solution, pour off the supernatant, dry it a little bit, you're left with a salmon pink powder. To the salmon pink powder, you add a few drops of your gum arabic. Just enough to make it paintable. Okay? Now, the, you can use different things, you can use an acrylic medium if you want. The reason I use gum arabic is it's water soluble. Now, once you've got your uh, paint, then what you can do is uh, paint the circuit with it. So I've just painted a line of that. Leave that to dry and that will conduct. So just to give you a view of that, you can see it's starting to precipitate out now. We're getting this salmon pink colour here, which is the bit that we actually want. Now once you've painted that onto the card, so you've got it there, your line on your card, uh, it's quite porous. Um, it's lying as a collection of lo lots of little nanoparticles and um, in a binder. And because it's like that, and it's got quite a lot of porosity, it will oxidise relatively quickly. And although that one uh, will in fact work, once it's dry it will conduct, um, it will stop conducting over time as it oxidises and goes browner and browner. And obviously that's a problem, and I was reading up a little bit about this, and I came across this guy that was talking about annealing. He was saying that one way to get rid of this problem is to um, stick it in your oven at about 250 degrees and burn off all the gum arabic volatile compounds and help the whole thing sink down a bit. problem with that is, of course, I've just painted it on paper. And then again, we've got another guy that was saying that um, what you could do instead of actually... Um, thermally annealing it, you could mechanically anneal it, uh, and his suggestion was to um, stick it in a press, put about 10 or 15 tonnes on it, and it would flatten all the particles down. Now, obviously I don't have a press, and not a lot of people at home have presses, so what I did was um, take a ball end um, spatula like this, and just rub it, rub it hard. Once you rub it hard, then um, you get a shiny copper layer. There you go. Nice little shiny copy layer. Now I've attached that up to a battery, plus and minus. And let's put this on the right way around. There you go. Lighting up that LED quite nicely. So a um, little bit of technical detail on it. That um, that copper trace that we've just formed on the paper has a resistance of about a third of an ohm per centimetre, something like that, and uh, the bare conductive, incidentally, has a resistance of about 100 ohms per centimetre. So um, this thing becomes um, really quite usable, really. Now, as I say, you don't make much of it when, when you do each of these, and luckily, as I say, you don't need much of it. So when you've burnished it to that nice, bright, shiny copper look, it's going to last. Uh, you could uh, probably even solder to it. I haven't tried that yet, but I'll give it a go. So what I'm going to do is um, make a few bits and pieces out of this and see how it kind of um, performs. But there's quite a few people who have been looking at homemade inks, and there's a few suggestions of mixing carbon with uh, various glues and trying those. But this um, method of producing copper nanoparticles and then suspending it in a gum arabic binder, painting it, then burnishing it to the bright copper, uh, seems to work quite nicely and so I thought I'd share it with you with everybody so you can have something else to play around with. Anyway, enjoy and thank you for watching.